All right. So <clears throat> I have a lot of stuff prepared. I don't know if we're going to get through it all. Um, but that is okay. Does everybody have a Bible? I know Robert collects phones, but I'm okay. Um, but does everybody have a Bible? No? If you have like a phone Bible, that's fine too. Everybody needs a Bible today though. No. Yeah, take your phone. No, there's Bibles right there. Give it to me. Okay. Well, I would hope, no, take your phone because if you have your thing, I would like different versions of yeah. the Testament. I have the Spanish version too. Okay, no, well, no. We're, we're going to stick to English today. All right. Okay, so I want to start with three questions, and these are um, questions that you guys need to like answer to yourselves, um, not something that I expect you guys to answer out loud. But the three questions are, this does not work. So how do you study? So think about these as I'm writing. Um, what do you study for? Um, question mark. And what do you study with? Okay, so what do you, how do you study if it is that you study in your everyday normal life, um, if it is that you study? Um, what do you study for specifically? Are you studying for a class? Do you have to teach something? Um, are you trying to create a sermon? Are you trying to create like a uh, devotional? Um, and what do you study with? Okay, so for like myself, like I always have like a prayer journal, a study Bible, maybe a devotional Bible if something doesn't make sense to me. There's a difference, you guys, between like a devotional Bible. Liz, can you hold yours up? Mine's not a devotional. Oh, well, it, it's not, it's like a, it's. It's like the message. You guys know the message Bible. Mm -hmm. It's like simplified, easier to study, um, easier to understand. And then there's study Bibles um, like the NIV or ESV or RSV that try to be more literal in like in an accordance with like the Greek and the Hebrew. Um, so these are the three questions. I hope that you guys are answering them to yourselves. <laughs> Okay, and then the first thing that I want to say is that there is absolutely no wrong way to study your Bible. Like, as long as you're doing it, you're doing something good. So, this, this is just my way, the way that I was taught in school. My entire degree was um, focused on answering these questions, teaching me how to study my Bible um, in a scholarly and way and in a um like a devotional kind of way okay so like i said this is my way this is what works for me uh mixed both with what i learned and uh, my own thing my own thing is um my prayer journal i definitely try to journal before every time that i um start studying just because i feel like it leaves me at a point and like invites the Holy Spirit to come and reveal God's message to me, but that, you know, you don't have to. I know guys don't really like to journal, which is fine. Um, okay, so there are so many different levels to scripture. Um, so you could read or study on like a surface level, just reading um, what it is, what it's saying. Uh, it's not bad to study on the surface level. Most of us I feel start off that way and then there's like an in-depth and then there's like a super in-depth that it's like scholars with PhDs are like just trying to go for it and like analyze everything. Um, so a combination of all three of those both on the surface in-depth and then super in-depth is what gets me pumped about scripture like I love that I could be studying some verse and 
it means something to me in my personal life like immediately like yes I'm going through a breakup right now this is helpful to me this is God speaking to me but then there's also like a scholarly way to look at it like what this verse meant to the audience that it was written for like what they took away from it like for example like Luke wrote to the Gentiles specifically like what the issue like in my head as I'm studying I was like what issues were the Gentiles going through at this time that Luke decided to write this for them how did they take it how did they receive it um stuff like that and then the super in-depth would be like looking at what Luke meant so how they took it is different from what he meant sometimes um so looking at like authors points of view um would take it like super in depth and looking at like themes in like the book of genesis or themes in any book any book has like core themes and what they're trying to get uh through as like a message to the people how the people take it is usually different um but those are like three different levels of scripture, like I say, it gets me really excited to think about them. Um, so I think that something like on that kind of level where you could take it personal, like scholarly and then like super scholarly, um, for me it makes scripture infinite, like it, it, um, it changes the game like it, it means something different to me it could mean something completely different to Maddie like we're two different readers with two different points of view with two different lives that are going to through two different things and there's an infinite amount of uh, ways that you could approach a text um, so it makes it infinite I feel and it just reflects the infinite God that we have Okay, so, um, yeah, uh -huh. okay, so ways to study. There's a difference, and then I want this, this is de definitely going to be a more interactive um, lesson than most, um, but I want you guys to maybe, like, discuss amongst you guys' selves, like, get with a partner or something. But I want you to discuss what is the difference between uh, reading the Bible and studying the Bible. Okay? So I'll give like two minutes. Just reading the Bible versus <clears throat> studying the Bible. Back on. Okay, so we just discussed reading versus studying. Which do you guys think is more important? Study. Um, okay, why would you say studying? Elmer, since you were the one who <laughs> <Those laughs> <are> said <laughs> studying. <laughs> yeah, buddy? <laughs> okay, well, it's a trick question. Um, they are both <laughs> equally important. Studying um, is more, like I said, like more of what the text means. Reading would be more of what the text means to you. So they're both equally important. Every time I, like I would spend like a whole, like 11 weeks on just like the book of Luke and I had to read that thing like 20 times through separately. And the first times they would just be like, read it through, just read it through, like whatever. Just, just don't think about anything, just go with the story. I'd read it again and you know, have to, um, come up with some questions and that that's kind of what I want to get into so reading it the first time through letting God speak to you and whatever speak into your life and whatever situation that you're going through you might like jot some notes down or whatever so they're both equally important but one of uh, the things that has helped me develop into like a uh, like a like a scholarly student I guess would be um, what I had to do so like I said they would assign me in school like two chapters like a day and um, I'd have to come up with like 30 to 50 observations or questions on two chapters and you're like 
how the heck are you going to do that, right? At first, you're like, this is impossible. Like, it's two chapters. There's not a lot of material. But I think this is what takes it from reading to studying. So, like, you... That doesn't make sense. I don't know why I wrote that. I was just reading to studying. This isn't making sense. Sorry. So, um... It, it, uh, like anything, like reading, like observing something, something that you didn't notice before. And we started, I started off on like Genesis, which is what we're going to do today. I started off on like Genesis 1 and 2 was like my first scriptures class. And I'm like, I read this text like a hundred times already. Like what more can I learn from it? Like what, um what is it that I don't already know? And now I have to come up with 30 to 50 questions about the first two chapters of the Bible. I'm like, come on. I was, I was like, I'm just going to be making up. I'm just going to be making up things. But then as I started doing it, um, this was like easy, right? I would go to like 80, even though they only asked me for 50 because there's just so many things that I wanted to like learn. And then, um, that would be like an assignment to turn in this, and then the next assignment would be try to answer all of these, which was dumb of me to do 80 sometimes. But um, that would be uh, what it is. So we're going to open. Okay, and then finally, so when you're answering, trying to answer the questions that you asked yourself, it would be like looking at commentaries, looking at um, articles and stuff, and uh, looking at different translations or whatever. So that would be how you answer the question. So we're going to just go through. Um, I want to do Genesis 1 and 2 just because I feel like it's something that we've all read. But um, And also because we're going through it in our, uh, if you're going to a Bible study, it like oh during the week like we're covering Genesis one and two right now so um, and I really love the classes because they bring up questions or points that we don't really consider on our daily reading so and that would be more of like a study thing so I do want us to go to Genesis one and two it's gonna be a little heavy because we're gonna read through the whole thing but I want all of us to come up with questions, observations, something that you didn't notice before, something that stood out, a word that doesn't make sense to you, whatever that may be, um, as we read. And, I'd, yeah, so everybody's going to give me a question um, or a observation. And we're going to, yeah, so it's going to be a long, long reading, but that's okay. We've all read this, I'm sure, almost all, probably all. Okay, so I have the NIV, if you follow along. If your version is different from my version, um, and it, it says something like completely different, usually when there's like issues with translation, that means because the Hebrew is really hard to understand at that point. So if you hear something says completely different, like raise your hand, we'll, we're going to see what your version says. Okay, um, let's do 10 verses at a time each, yeah? So Liz, let's start with you. <clears throat> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness, God called light day and darkness night, and evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. Then God said, let there be space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And this is what happened. God made this space to separate the waters from the earth and the waters from the heavens, and, called, and God called the space sky. And evening passed and morning came, marking the second day. Then God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place, so dry ground may appear, and that is what happened. God called this dry ground land and water seas, and God saw that it was good. Okay, so just from those ten verses, something that you guys noticed, something that you guys observed, something that you didn't notice before, anything. Are 
Are you asking all? Yep. Oh, all? Oh, okay. Uh, what does it mean that the earth was formless and empty? Okay, formless or <coughs> void. <coughs> Vacuum is another word. Empty. <coughs> Question mark. What does it mean? Okay, another one. Okay, um, what? Do you have another one? Yeah, but I mean, I don't want to keep going. Come on, anybody? Okay, does anybody notice how God does not create waters? What's up with that? Right? Um, because the Spirit was hovering over the water. What's up with the Spirit? Is that different from God? Is it the same as God? You know, just questions. That's all I want <coughs> us to do is just ask questions. We're not answering anything today. Um, okay. In the beginning. What? Anything, anything. Oh, what came first, light or darkness? Okay. Was darkness created? Or I mean, origin yeah. of light? Darkness created or not? Come on, guys. <laughs> Anybody? We all gotta come up with stuff. This is gonna be impossible to get through all ten chapters because there's so much in just these two verses. Okay. Was, was it truly a twenty-four hour day? Twenty-four hour days. Get into it before we studied this with Helms. What about before the beginning of time? Anything else? Look at how many we have already. Um, so God calls the light good, but he doesn't call the darkness good. Another thing. Um, again, with Josh's thing, an evening pass and morning came signifying a day. Is it 24 hour days? Any other questions? Um, something that is super interesting, and I think that you guys said it in here. Uh, and God saw that the light... Okay, hold on. Um, verse 7. So God made the vault to separate the waters under the vault. I don't have it correct. Liz, you want to read verse 7? And... That is what happened. God made this space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heavens. So what is the difference between the waters of the earth and the waters of the heavens? You know. So these are questions that I would ask. This is studying. This is taking these ten verses, and I know that I'm not giving you guys enough time because it would take hours. But taking ten verses at a time and just loading them up, just writing them down, observations, things you notice, words that didn't make sense before, like vault, emptiness, void, um, hovering, is God on a hoverboard? Like what Like what does it mean for the Roja to, to be hovering? Because then it would seem like it's not infinite, right? It's like a being moving over the water. But we know the spirit to be non-tangible, I think. Anyway, next ten verses. Julia. Wait, hold on. The first verse, in the beginning, God created. In what beginning? God's beginning? What beginning are we talking about? Okay, good. What beginning? Okay, another thing. We could get, so this is taking it spiritual... Why don't we, just in these ten verses, why don't we bring in science? Sci. Sci? No. Nope. Science. <laughs> why don't we bring in science? What does science say? How, do, how have scholars that are also scientists or biologists read this or these, you know? Like, you could get in to a whole thing, right? Okay. Sorry, I'm getting excited. Verse 11, Juliet. 
Then God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Then God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven, heavens to divide the day from the night. And let them be signs and seasons for the days and years. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the le lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God sent them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and, the, and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Then God said... Okay, okay no, read first one. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heaven. Okay. Questions. Observations. <clears throat> okay. If you were at our Bible study class, what does it mean, like, during the week? So, what do you mean that God created a light on the first day, let there be light, but he doesn't create sun and moon and stars until the fourth day? <coughs> fourth day? Third day? Fourth. Fourth. Third. Might be third. Fourth. The third but, the so then what kind, of, what kind of light was created on the first day? There's also a lot of separation happening. Yes. Like light from darkness. It says it twice. He's separating the light from the darkness, and then everything. He's separating. Like, he's separating the vaults from the sky, the waters from the earth, <coughs> and the waters of the ground. There's a lot of separation going, right? So, which you know, caveat towards separating the goats and <laughs> sheep. Uh -huh. So, um, there's a lot of separation that's going on. Good. Um, I wrote that down. Okay. And the land produced vegetation. What do you mean? God didn't do it? Or he let the land do it? That's giving power to, you know, something else, no? Um, produce. <laughs> Veg. Okay. Anything else? Just from those two? <clears throat> um, I don't know if we've gotten to it yet. So God is blessing, this is interesting, God is blessing the days, we've noticed. Mm -hmm. What day has he not blessed or said it was good? I mean, day two, mm -hmm. day two, no good. <laughs> or at least yet, because he does do a blanket term at the end. What do you mean he doesn't say call it good? Right? These are all great questions that I'm asking. But you guys need to be asking them too. Anything else? <laughs> you guys are really enthusiastic. What does your version, first version, say for verse 16? Verse 16 said, God made two great lights, and the great light was govern the, was to govern the day, and the lesser light, which is interesting, is to govern the night. He also made the stars. So oh, what is the version. great line? What? You have my same version? I, don't know I have an idea. So, great light, lesser light, why? You know? No? Okay. The greater one governs <clears throat> the day, and the smaller one governs the night. The lesser, yeah. Why, what does it mean to be lesser? Why is the sun greater? Why is the sun greater? No? The, the lesser governs the darkness. No, come on, guys. Like the rest of the planet. What about the rest of the planet? And then yes. the sun, the sun, or is it like the sun outside the galaxy? Another really? thing, scientific. Scientifically speaking, the sun is older than the earth. But according to the Biblia, the earth was created and then the sun was created. So there's just a whole bunch of... Anybody else? Some? Okay. Uh, wait, wait. 
Oh, go ahead, Marty. On verse 14, when he says, let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And then on in verse 16, he repeats this again, like he made the stars and he made them for, um, to be signs and seasons and days and years. So time. <clears throat> time? Season. What What would you time ask season. about time? You're, you're noting time, but what, come up with a bigger, go back to the beginning. Didn't he already create time? When? Evening in the morning? Or on the first day? On the fir- in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Beginning time. Mm-hmm. So ask, like, so what about before? Was there no time? Is there no time outside of our knowing of it? So it wasn't like hours. I mean... Because he just created. Was it, you just gotta ask he these questions. Created. Also, verse 3 says, let there be light. What light is he talking about what? if it's not created till the fourth day? What light? There's, in our Bible study, we actually, there's some scholars, there are people that think, um, that the ones that believe that Jesus was created, when God says, let there be light, they think that he's creating because in First uh, John 5, 1, I think, 1, 5, it says that God is light. So when it says, let there be light, it's let there be more of me. So scholars, some people that believe that Jesus was created, said that when they eat, and they like, this is the creation of Jesus Christ. Um, so it's just a whole, you know, okay. Just to blow your mind. I'm just trying to get you guys excited about how many things we can But we don't believe that, though. Right? We don't. But, I mean, like, just to, like, to, under, like, to, to study it, like, why is it that they believe that? Like, at least you know. And then you could come up with, like, an argument against why that doesn't make sense. Doesn't. And go to different parts of the text. Right, where God talk or Jesus talks about his origin at the beginning with God. So, I mean, all of these were, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're probably just going to cover chapter. Well, I wanted to get into a little bit of chapter two. Yeah. We have Minutes. no time. Okay, that's okay. We don't have to. So then we get into chapter two, and it tells the creation story again, right? So if you noticed it, so go to verse two. Four, two, four, Genesis. Verse two, four. Mhm. No, chapter two, verse four. And this is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, and when the Lord God made earth and the heavens. So he's saying he's stating everything that he already said again. Why two? Two, what's the difference between the two? There's so many questions, and I'm getting, I'm going to start wrapping this now. There's so many questions that you guys could ask. This is just like one chapter, one and a half chapters um, of the text. Um, observations are what make my studying, like what energizes me. Um, you could ask an infinite amount of questions. The amazing thing is, is that all of this, Every single verse in the Bible has already been studied. It has already been analyzed and taken apart and put back together. And all of these questions, somebody has already asked before, so you just need to find them. Um, The first thing that I would say is don't consult something like a commentary or something first like do that after you've already asked all of your questions because then you're letting somebody else's questions dictate how you study and that's not God speaking to you that's you listening to what God told somebody else so asking questions writing them down I like I said I always study with a prayer journal or something I write down my observations my questions and then I try to answer them So just with these alone up here, we can go into topics of like creation theories, microevolution, macroevolution, ancient Israel, how they read it, um, eco-theology, what this means for the ecosystem, for all our arborists in the room, numerology with the numbers that God is, or that Genesis 1 and 2 are saying. um, Astrology. Astrology like end times, eschatology, um, right? So like pre, 
Easter theology. So what does all this mean since it's before the resurrection? Like, there's just so many different points of view. Like, the origin of evil you could get into because obviously God does not create evil in the creation narratives. Um, so pre-earth times. What about the dinosaurs? Like, how come the Bible... So you could... This is infinite. Um, and it leads to studying your Bible. And I hope that you guys, if you guys want to write some of these down, some of them are great uh, tools to study by. Um, and honestly, I'm going to be completely honest, some of them do lead you down like rabbit holes that never end, like asking about the origin of evil. And then you get all caught up on like, is God good, really, you know? So you start asking questions that maybe you shouldn't be trying to answer. Um, and I want to leave with one verse um, in regards to that because I got caught up in some of these questions that I asked so many times. And at the end, I needed to bring it back home. So let's go. I maybe don't. I'm like summarizing it for my own self in this. But John 5, 39 through 40 in the Bible. And this is God, or this is Jesus speaking to the Pharisees. This is my favorite verse in the Bible because I feel like I need to be reminded of this all the time. I've summarized it for myself, um, so I'm going to read you my summary of it and how I apply it to my life. So this is, again, Jesus speaking to the Pharisees, and he says, You study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. Dot, dot, dot. But the scriptures point to me. Dot, 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 dot come to me to have this eternal life. So at the end of all of this, I always have to come back to that verse because as deep as I get into it or as you know excited or as many difficult questions that I try to ask, I always find myself coming back to this verse and reminding myself that in everything, everything that I'm reading, everything that I'm doing, it all points back to Jesus. And it's not this, studying your Bible is great, and I encourage everybody to do it. But in Scripture, we do not find eternal life. It is the Scripture that points to Jesus, and in Him we find our eternal life. Okay. Um, questions, comments, or concerns? <laughs> or already complaints. Complaints. <laughs> There's so many different levels of this guy. I'm trying to summarize three years and 40 minutes. Hopefully we can do another one. Um, okay. Uh, let's me pray.